Well, everyone, we're going to be starting off today by taking a look at the vascular view, the best teams in the APAC region first. And after that, we're going to be taking a look at your brackets, the submissions towards the 100K Bracket Challenge, and of course, this week's mailbag. I'm Avast, this is Jane, and welcome to Contested. Hello, everyone. We are once again live from the Frontier Communication Studio, and the Twitter viewers uh, are once again asking, can I join Envy? I was going <laughs> yeah, to point that out. Right you're about right, to do it. Right, you, you beat me to, to it. There, and, yeah. <laughs> there, and that was the same person asking for the longest time where to find Twitter video. So they wanted to join Twitter video just to ask that question. <laughs> Ring bell, just please. to ask that question. All right. Question. Well, hello, Twitter viewers. Welcome to the show. We are broadcasting live from the Frontier Communications Studio here in Dallas, Texas. And this is the third episode in the series of the postseason prediction power powwows. So we're going over the best teams in the league as we go into that playoff segment. We did the middling teams We called it the toilet zone. The toilet zone. (laughs) The toilet zone. The toilet zone. But No, no, that was bottom teams. Middle teams teams teams. sediment. Sediment Sediment zone. Oh, I've got the terminology all wrong. But regardless, wait, what are we calling this tier? This is the vascular view. I I should have just let you do this intro. But yes, we're going to be talking about the three best teams in APAC and the four best teams in NA. And that's uh, going to be, you know, the last contested show before we actually go into the playoffs. So, and then if you are watching the playoffs, which I would assume you are because you are all deprived of Overwatch League goodness from the one weekend break we had. You know, of course, Avas is going to be doing the companion stream on his own channel, but Dallas Fuel also got permission to do the companion stream here from the studio on Friday there. So you have a multitude of, of smorgasbord. Mm-hmm. A uh, sort of like a CC's pizza worth of options. I, I still really think that I, I want to call your companion stream from our companion stream because like, you know, the the Dallas Fuel ones we do are like super biased towards Dallas Fuel, obviously. Yeah. And mine so are not. Your, your, mine yours are not, are not at all. I, I want to just like compare narratives or storylines. Be like, yeah, about. So this well, is I mean, so the thing <laughs> is like, so imagine like you call in and I come in and then the first thing I'm like, the Dallas Fuel are the worst team I, I've ever seen. Like yep. it would be a weird juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah, especially that. since that uh, everybody in this area of the world would just be thinking that the Dallas Fuel are the best team that's ever existed. You know, so. I have to say, I feel like Dallas fans are a unique breed in that they recognize their team isn't the best team, but they still like can't stop cheering for it. <laughs> it's like, it's they, the they opposite. Share of, that they share that uh, bloodline with, with Boston, Boston uprising. Yeah, fans. it's sort of like Boston, but the yeah. difference is Boston are much more. It feels like their current fan base has been beaten into submission. It's sort of just like, yes, like, yeah. okay, they're not good, but you're doing your best. Yes, <laughs> yes. And Dallas Fuel fans like, I hate this team. I hate watching this team. I hate this team so much. Fire them all. Oh, but go, Dallas Fuel. Yeah. Yes, yeah. go. They hate them, but they can't stop watching them. It's just, it's it's an addiction. It's a, it's a painful addiction. It is. Well, I guess we just start off with, first of all, there hasn't been really been a big news since our last episode. It's Where is your Jack in the Box popping off moment? There's none. There's none? no games. We don't have any. We don't have a we don't have a popping off, so we replaced it with more teams for the final day. I mean, and we, then the we, bracket we managed view. to do a favor sixty second recap without games. <laughs> that, uh, Wait, did we get favor for your Sunday? Did we get the hundred twenty second recap? <laughs> <laughs> we get the hundred twenty second. Well, well, you know what? Let's do. Uh, someone, someone, let me l- one second here. Avast is madly googling get, for something. Wait, I'm getting uh, something. I'm getting. He's something. getting something. I am so. I am so excited to see what you thing. pull up. Okay. Um, okay, mans. can we play the Jack of the Box popping off? Uh, say, say the, the roll the bumper. Roll the bumper. Roll the bumper. He does we don't not have, have it. it. Okay, we okay. do not have the 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 video. Just, just so, it yourself, so what, wait, what wait, does wait, it sound wait. like? Is there a it's jingle? Like, Bum, bum, bah, 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 bah. Okay, Jack, this is your Jack of the Box popping off. I'm throwing The joys chicken. and pitfalls of growing up are seen through the eyes of a child named Mason <laughs> Eller Con- Coltrane. His parents, Patricia Arquette, Ethan Hawke, and his sister, Lorelei Lorele Linklater. <laughs> Vi- vignettes filmed with the same ca- link later Vi- filmed with the same cast over the course of 12 years capture family meals road trips birthday parties graduations and other important milestones songs from Coldplay Arcade Fire and other artists capture the time period directed by Richard Linklater Linklater there's you, your pop it off you, <laughs> you really popped off of that that was the boyhood it took 12 years to make you know what I, I, that's, that's what popped off it's really important uh, that uh, we make sure the sponsors are happy by meeting 
the obligations. Of so. course, the vast segment is the mega scuffed one. Did you watch the <laughs> popping off <laughs> no, from it, yesterday? It was beautiful. My segment's the popping off. Well, I guess I didn't have a graphic for mine, technically. Yeah, right? We had I to guess, sing it, and I had I to guess just I didn't have a, a chat bumper. Had to imagine that I was throwing chicken in the air. Hmm. Keck W, so Keck, true. Keck W, so true. true. Any truers? So true. Any well, truers? Ah, <laughs> oh, this is gone. <laughs> this is good. This is real good stuff. Real good. So, really no news from yesterday, other than Frankie Ward came in to be like a guest host for the yeah. Overwatch League, which is big. She's that really is, good. Yeah, she's very good. She's very, very good. Uh, so, that's that's exciting news to replace Zoe for a bit while she's still in Switzerland. Um, but uh, really nothing else. No. In terms of no like, big news. Big news. I guess they have the sneaker competition, actually. They what? I missed this so entirely. So they, they actually put out for the Overwatch League that they have a bunch of milestones, like goals for players to hit. If they hit these goals, they could win a pair of sneakers. Like during, oh, yeah. yeah. Which is interesting. That's actually pretty unique. I, I wouldn't expect something like that to happen. I don't know who's this. The sponsoring company was, um, let me I, find it, it. It was like Bit or something, right? Was it Bit? No, I, I, I can't. But it's, kind of but it's still a pretty interesting idea to have like, players are working towards goals and if they hit those goals they get like a reward i think that's like probably one of the more interesting things i've seen that is pretty cool it's way it's way cooler than the cdl chipotle uh thing where it's like if somebody gets 40 kills in a game the chipotle gives away burrito like free burrito coupons and then they only gave away like five of them and they bait. <laughs> it's bait bait that's, that's what, it was. what it is um and then they like so some of the rewards are pretty interesting uh, they posted them out. I didn't want to go. I want to go find them real quick. But like the rewards are really, really weird. And some of them are like straight up throw picks. Like they want you to uh, they wanted them to hit like a certain amount of environmental kills or something. So, like Lucio's will just be only Reddit Lucioing, <laughs> like going for boops the entire that just time. Means that whenever you play against Boston, you're just not trying to go for the wins. You're trying to go for stats so that you get rewarded with shoes. Exactly. And that's the best. We have possible. really skewed the incentive structure for the Overwatch League. There it is. Sneaker bonuses. Pog. I found it. Okay. So let's let's read off some of these deals because I just think yeah, it's so well, interesting. They're going to collude, not for wins, but we're just going to take turns saying so, the edge so both teams can get sneakers. If they, so if they so for the being the the threshold for each achievement, how many players can win them? Is that there's a flood of deadlift. So oh, account yeah. a player accounts for fifty percent or more of a team's elimination in a single in a map that their team wins. And then that's up to two players can achieve that. Tanks and supports three plus environmental kills from a single ability or ultimate usage. So like, there's halt. the Reddit Lucio halt Reddit Lucioing fewest deaths. So there's the bait. That's the Woo Y'all Award. Oh. So that's where he, <laughs> that's the Woo Y'all Award is where you if run you, away. If you guys don't get the reference to the Woo Y'all Award, it was the end of Junker Town, um, where Woo Y'all could have triggered overtime contest, and the rest of his team was respawning, and he just decided to fly away from the payload. Uh, and let overtime tick down and caps because he didn't want to mess up his KD. Now this one, I don't know how this is. So there is something for the tanks where you can get a if you earth shatter five or more opponents. I'm assuming a single one, up to three players can get that as a tank roll. But like, I don't think based off what I've heard from that is I don't think anyone's gonna be playing Reinhardt. So what if just a team bust out Reinhardt to just try to like get the sneakers? Like <laughs> they're playing, playing a really who's bad playing team Boston or something. First? Who's playing Boston? Uh, well, it's not a, it's Houston, so there's not a guarantee. Like, mm, but it could be hydration. It could be hydration. Hydration just gonna yeah. go mad wilding. See, I was looking up my ah, very good slide. vernacular See, usage I've, there. I've been I've been mad wilding. <laughs> you can't just keep using the same one. You're gonna. But have that's to, the only Gen Z lingo I know right you're now. To, you're gonna have to use some maybe some boolin. Bool. <laughs> maybe some boolin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. but yeah overall not too much on the the news front that's about it i'm excited to see frankie sneaker bonuses are cool we'll see how they work out if we're gonna see any throws jonak's releasing sneakers. new merch with n oh yeah. yeah some some jonak merch that's also a thing but enough about uh just our random things that happen our, in the this, Overwatch is all, this is all just fashion i mean stuff. we had an episode yesterday it's like how much could it happen in 24 not much, hours not, not much. much really not, not much. much but to get into the actual meat and potatoes mm, and thus the potato delicious. skins of this episode. Yeah, did you know that this guy didn't realize that you were supposed to eat the potato skins? No, well, so I didn't like know the, the for skin baked potatoes, of potato skins. When you baked the potato, I didn't know you I didn't know you it was good to eat the potato skins. I didn't know it was good to eat them. Sometimes I question you. Like I would generally just eat the insides of the potato or the sweet potato. I didn't know you so could did also Did you take like a fork and scrape? No, no, no. I would just eat out of the potato till it was like empty. It blows my mind. I know. That's just how my family's always done it. <laughs> That's just how my family's always done it. They never, we never ate the potato skins, and then I learned that if you eat the potato skins. There's a lot of nutrients and fiber and such in the skins. So this is something new that I learned. So that's it. Yeah. That's that's it. Lulz just got dropped. I mean, we already talked about we Lulz talked about that dropped. yesterday. Yeah, we talked about that, and it didn't really matter at the end of the day because Justice 
it, he hadn't played for justice all season, blah, blah, blah. So if you want to talk about Lulcius, that was in yesterday's episode. But the actual portion of this episode is the playoff preview. Yes. The vascular view, as I call <laughs> it. The va- because these are the freaks. These are the muscular freaks of their divisions. And we're starting with APAC. Mm-hmm. And we have to start with the New York Excelsior. Do we? At their third seed in all APAC. Right. And New York, this team has been... Had some very big downs, but also has been looking a lot more up recently. They beat Charge in the Countdown Cup right before this. They went to a map five. They've sort of figured out their rotation for their players. Now they have Hoxel as well. They've added to the roster. Uh, They started playing Bianca for a much more aggressive style. Mm -hmm. They also added Mandu in. They did. Uh, so, So overall, they're a lot more aggressive than they were before. And it seems like, and they have the right here, like roster rotation for it. And they're looking like a lot scarier force coming into the playoffs. Now, the, one of the interesting things to me about our discussion around New York Excelsior is that you listed Hoxall as one of the the key players towards the success of the New York Excelsior, which was really quite interesting to me. So, you know, it, for myself, I think that the person who is going to be most critical to the success of the New York Excelsior is going to be Mono. And I think that he was the one of the guys, like, when New York went the farthest mm. that they did, uh, Mano them swipping, swipping, them swapping off of that more of like defensive Winston yeah. style into the very proactive, aggressive ball style, which Mano hadn't shown before, but he did really quite fantastic on. Um, I think that going into the playoffs, that kind of key of having Mano's play style be aggressive, be proactive yeah. again, that's kind of like the key that I see towards New York Excelsior's victory. Victory being, yeah, I think I, for me, the reason I chose Hoxel is because of the fact that like, they have this explosive player that's flex because they they had they had uh, who are you as a Genji specialist before <laughs> yes and he <laughs> was just vacuuming all the yeah. Genji specialists and he's not really playing as much anymore because now Genji's not even meta mm-hmm. but the thing is with Genji not being meta still it's still a great opportunity for Hoxel to be playing for this squad because they can be playing like you know what's been normally being played was the uh, recently was the Ash uh, Sombra yeah so. For me, I feel like, do they find a, a solution for Hoxel to be in? Or do they just say, like, okay, we're entirely, we're, we're just going to entirely move away from him. We're not going to play any projectile heroes. And we're going to go back to the Nene and uh, almost exclusively Nene yeah. or uh, Sabi Obi. W- or also, I guess they've been playing Libro and Hitscan, too. Mm-hmm. Now, and New York Excelsior, are obviously third in the APAC region. And their their record is 16 and 8 as well. But Haxel's record with them, he's negative 2. So he's lost two more games with mm-hmm. New York Excelsior than, True. than he's won. So, like, he's a good player. But, you know, we talked about this with both the middling teams and the lower tier teams. That there are some people, Edison, I think, was the one that came up, who is individually quite talented. But hasn't really been able to convert things to wins for whatever reason that is. And, of course, New York has been struggling with some sort of identity. And they looked like they were, like, they finally decided to try and go aggressive. But, you know, overall, and this could be a point towards you that maybe Haxel is the the key to victory because, you know, if he does completely mesh in and find the culture, they they become more comfortable together, that could improve. But, uh, you know, at least statistically, Haxel has not been good. He's Yeah, I, I don't think Excelsior. he has been statistically good. I just think it's been a fit for them. But for me, it's more of do they even try to utilize him at mm-hmm. all or do they move away from that? Because some teams have been forcing projectile players to play Sombra. And New York might just say no entirely and just stick entirely with their other roster, which I feel like is pretty interesting with the crux of that squad. But I I tend to agree that their aggressiveness with that mono style is Mm going to be big for them because they have a habit of falling back into into Turtle. (laughs) Yes, Going back and being Turtles again. And, And it's really not what the meta has been shifting towards. It's not what the hero pools have been shifting towards. It's playing a very static style. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's interesting to me if they're even going to want to incorporate him into the lineup at all because he's been sort of like an anchor point at times for like what their supposed identity was. And they swapped away and found more success from others. So it's more of where do they decide to go? Which path do they take? And we'll have to see. But I'm confident about them, much more confident leading into this postseason than I have been the rest of the year. I feel like they have looked by far the best currently and mm-hmm. they've looked any other time. And there actually is a, a chance for them to get the grand finals. Um, do I find it like, because they could beat charge again. Yes, they, they could. could. I don't think they'll beat dragons. Uh, yeah. That one, that <laughs> one is much more unlikely, but charge is a team that, you know, I would say is within the realm of possibility of New York beating. Would I say that New York is a favorite to beat the charge? No, probably not. But again, with this meta shifting, there's so many different variables, whether you have kind of mano on those characters that they've been moving towards and having more success than the double shield, more defensive play style, the double shield kind of requires there are a lot of things that could potentially tilt that matchup between the Guangzhou charge and the New York Excelsior in New York's favor. 
Mono and not Arisa Poggers. I just find it really funny <laughs> when people do stuff like that. They always say, who are you? But never say, how are you? <laughs> so New York, I- I'm I'm interested to see where they move forward there because it's always a team that has been flown so close and then fallen down their wings, yeah. the wax on them melted off like Icarus. Like they've, and everyone's always like, oh, our coaches are the worst. <laughs> I hate our coaches, New York fan says circa every year. And they've always felt they deserved to be much higher and they mm-hmm. never found that point yet. And this is another like crucial inflection point for New York is what roster do they choose? And now with this roster, what style do they play? Because they also have the talent to be very good and they've proven they can be good with beating charge. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a similar-ish meta. They're not quite from Countdown Cup where they had their best performance of the year. So I- I'm very excited to see how New York does. And if they fail spectacularly... Then New York fans, New York fans are going to be so angry. They will be very upset. Yeah. Uh, and it'll just be funny again with New York having another season of being like a top three to four team, but never actually getting close to winning <laughs> anything, <laughs> yeah. uh, which I think is going to be hilarious. But for the se- next team, the number two seed, yes, a dynamic, a dynamic deuce, as they say, Do- dose, dynamic dose, <laughs> not dynamic deuce, maybe, but a dynamic dose <laughs> is, uh, is charge. Yes. Guangzhou charge. This team has been spectacular. Has been. It has been spectacular. They've still fallen behind Dragons, as of everyone else. Yep. But they've had some close matches. They've also had some rotating players in and out because of Visa issues with Nero and also with Neptuno. Um, but they just have just the craziest, one of the best DPS lines in the league. And one of those tank lines. Yeah. And also one of the, one of the probably star rookies and also people have argued for MVP as well with Krong. Um there, I've always been a huge fan of their backline, or not so much the backline, but specifically Shu. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never necessarily been huge on Chara, though I feel like Chara has had a much better year this year. Yes. And also, Rio has always been super solid. But Eileen and Happy, crazy DPS line, can fill just about every role that they need. They also have the options with their tank line to be very flexible, especially if they can play Sigma around that, because Krong Sigma is so good. And Shu is just a monster on the Ana, which is Ana is more than likely going to be the majority of what flex support is going to be played. And so I'm feeling super confident with Charge going into this because they have the upset. They are probably the only team in my eyes, I think, that has the, a serious upset potential against Dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, New York, there's some hope, but I don't find it likely. Charge is looking to be the radar of like, especially as we get into a scrappier meta where their DPS line and their support line is just going to be nuts. Yeah, I think this is going to be Charge's time to like shine. They are the team. If any team is going to beat Dragons... It's in APAC. It's going to be charged. I just can't think of any other squad. And there is a little bit of worry for myself, kind of like how we were talking about with Gushwe. You know, his best hero is by far is Winston. I, you know, we've seen a lot of Krong Sigma and it's been extremely good. But if we are going towards a meta that doesn't have the Sigma, is Krong going to be as explosive or as large of a difference maker as he was on that Sigma? So that's a very realistic possibility that one of the big strengths, especially, you know, if you manage to get a player like Krong who is being a, a difference maker on you know traditionally not a role that is able to as easily make large differences like that you know losing that can be quite a large problem and we of course don't know what the actual playoff meta is going to settle into but there's a pretty high chance that it's not going to it's not going to be double shield or not going to be double shield so you could see some kind of weird hybrid compositions with sigma but uh yeah, it, even if it is, it could also be not just playing Sigma, but playing Sigma in double shield or some specific play style that Krong has found. And, you know, maybe it's uh, just not going to be transferable to the new meta, even if he does play Sigma. So this isn't saying that Krong is a Sigma one trick, but I don't think, especially with him being a rookie and so much of his playtime this being year having Sigma. been on Sigma, hmm. we don't know if he's a hyperflex like we've seen with some people in the league or if he is more towards kind of focused on that Sigma one tricking, you know, Sigma being one of the newer characters, I think that chance is pretty, it's a low possibility, but it is a possibility. I mean, he has had plenty of experience before this in like Korean contenders on non-Sigma heroes. So I do feel that he will probably be solid. It's always good to have their, their probably the most solid part of your team to be a tank player. Yeah. Because tank players, like we've talked about before, just anchor everything else and mm-hmm. they are the backbone and the initiator and the pacemaker for everything else. Yeah. So I am excited to see Charge on and how they compete in this new meta because it is a question mark to see Krong more so off the Sigma full time, uh, even though he has come off it. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be really exciting as well to continue to see their DPS line. Now, the support line sort of up in the air. Neptuno is coming back. It's supposed to be back in Korea. So we'll see if Neptuno or Charo will be playing more on the uh, second support role. Uh, 
but Charge is still this people rated them like specifically Sideshow I think rated them was like yeah I think I think Charge is going to be crazy this year yeah and I wasn't necessarily seeing it preseason but after watching them all season long they have really come together they have so much explosive talent so Charge fans should be happy because personally I think the more chaotic it get Charge has always been a brawl team yes at their heart even last year uh so I think Charge if we have such a chaotic meta is actually a contender to beat Dragons in a pack. But speaking of dragons. Yes, speaking of dragons, I think that not only are they very clear that the best team in APAC, but I think there's an argument made that their Overwatch is potentially looking like the best of both APAC and North America. So. Yeah, dragons, the number one seed, Shanghai Dragons. Yeah. This team. I mean, they made the Countdown Cup Finals look like a snooze fest. Yeah, like, and, they, and their their overall like regular season record is just ridiculous, too. Like, this is not even their playoffs. And two. Yeah, that is nuts yeah. that is a nuts record and so i am feeling that dragons are they're the team to beat they're the best team in the overwatch league yep. uh wait that means they're both of their losses were to chengdu hunters wasn't it not i'm oh both? Wait. yeah i'm pretty sure both because they lost to chengdu hunters twice this year but if they only had two losses wait a minute that can't be right wait a minute we have to check this <laughs> we have to check this losses chart no oh, oh. They lost to Seoul, but wasn't that in... No, it was Seoul. That was regular season. Yeah, it's Seoul and Chengdu. Seoul and Chengdu. That's their two losses in regular season. I thought season. they lost to Chengdu Hunters twice, no, though. No, no. Am I crazy? Unlucky. No. Dang. I was really hoping that that was going to be a thing, but... No. Sadly, <laughs> us, the Chengdu fanboys can the ch- rest. <laughs> they can rest you, easy. You mean me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chengdu and Seoul. All right. My bad. My bad. My bad. My yeah, bad. I know you want hunters to be better I, yeah, I than do, they are. I, I know I, you really do. It's but just so funny to me. It's not, it's not going to happen. It's <laughs> no. not going to happen. But Shanghai, this team, we have to talk about this team now because they're crazy. They're so good. I think they're the best team in Overwatch League. Um, other people disagree. People are sort of, but I, Shanghai just seem nuts. They see insanely dominant in a region that is very, very tough. And they have built a core of players that He's just, a, I mean, they've redefined the Sombra role in many ways with Lip on Sombra 2. Yep. Even though people have said like, okay, well, we don't feel like his EMP usage is the best, but everything about this squad has been close to perfection, as close as you can get, while being this hyper-aggressive. I mean, Li Zhe Gong, this guy is nutty, but he also has the most deaths on Lucio, like in the league, I'm pretty sure. Like this dude straight up hyper-feeds for kills all the time, but it works out because the, the picks and the space that he creates is just nutty, while also still being a great peeler for the back line. Mm-hmm. They're well-rounded at just every point, but I think for them, the thing that actually is going to be sort of their make-or-break point is once again based around their DPS lineup because it's Flutta, where Lip has come in and out to play Sombra, to play Reaper, to play some Hitscan. They've also put in Diem to do like very much Widow-centric metas, but Flutta has been their flex. He's been the guy that's playing Tracer, plays Genji for them. He's played Mei. Uh, I-, I think they need to really define their style in particular around Flutta because Fearless and Void are great. Now, obviously, you think Void, not necessarily a top tank, not, not necessarily the most, your favorite best pick for yeah. off tank, you know, but he's still really good. Yes, he yes. He's still really good. Uh, so I think Flutta is going to be the person they sort of, it has to be their choice of how are they going to play in postseason. It's based around what heroes are putting Flutta on. I don't know if you would think any differently, but that's how I feel about Dragons. No, I think everything, I think around Shanghai Dragons, you know, there's, they haven't really been even challenged enough to almost form counter arguments. Like they're just, again, such a dominant team. I'd agree that Flutta, especially with that flex is going to be the key to victory, probably the most important player. And, you know, my comment about Void, and I think that uh, this weekend especially, uh, I'll probably take a look at Vo- Void just because of the comments that I made. Was it last week? Now, once again, but, uh, you've, you've hit, you 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 hit the beehive and all. I did. Like, I did. Hit the be- says it again, huh? He's gonna say. Oh, he said my I favorite know, it's, player. It's, it's, the same, it's the same sort of thing where um, you can have. I mean, look at Janu for example. A lot of people would have considered Janu to be the best diva in the league yeah. last year, and now he's on Washington Justice, a team that we don't think is even going to be able to beat the Vancouver Titans True. squad. In the first round. So, like, you can have these divas who look fantastic, and you can have these divas that, you know, they're more, they're more like a full... Technically, you just spoiled that. We were going to talk about that later when we got the brackets. Well, you spoiled I'm sorry. That. You okay. spoiled that. Okay, but go on. But I'm just saying that you can have these kind of diva players that are very good synergistically with the team, making everybody a little bit better. But in terms of, like, individual... You know, you have some of those, those diva players that are, like, really true kind of individual carries, individual playmakers. And Void has never kind of felt like 
that kind of diva player to me. So, um, you know, could you take, uh, you know, in the same way that John Ute out of the Vancouver Titans is struggling to make the Washington justice good. Yeah. You know, the thing that I'm unsure about around Void's play style is if you took him out of the Shanghai Dragons, could he make the Washington justice good? Yeah. So, But then also you have to make the argument, right, is like, is John Ute making... Is Johnu not making the justice good yeah, just and by that's being so there, hard right? To tell. That's because so like, if you remove Johnu and put him with another off tank, like who knows what happens? Right? Like Ellie Boat had some good, solid performances with him when Absolutely. he was still with them. Yeah, but it just becomes a measure of like, does he make that team better? So it is. It is all. It is. But yeah, what it but is yeah we are definitely going to have to take a much 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 closer. more look at it. We're going to yeah. look. That's going to be probably one of the things that we'll talk about. Uh, you know, I'll probably spend some time and like. Watch Void into the lab and come prepared next week for a Shanghai it up. Dragons analysis. Specifically, but Shanghai Dragons, I think we can both agree, is sort of the team to beat. Absolutely, you know, not like that's, again, not just in APAC, just in the overall. Just in overall, yeah, yeah, just overall. Like they are, they're my favorite to be the best in the league. They have so much flexibility. They're ten- and the reason why I highlighted Flutta as sort of being their the thing that they're going to have to build around is that they cover every play style. They have everything covered. If they need to play dive tanks, Void and Fearless can both can do both of that. If they need to play shield tanks, Void and Fearless, or, or hell, they can bring in the stand one if they wanted to, to play that. Mm-hmm. Their back line is insanely flexible to play whatever they want. They have hit scan covered. They have Sombra covered. They have projectile heroes covered. They If they want to play something more hog exclusive, they put it in Gregory just only to play hog at points, mm-hmm. uh, which has been really good. She's been really good at it. And so I do think that they just have every play style possible. If they want to play the legendary hog Zarya, you know, they yeah. could theoretically do that if they legendary. wanted a legendary without a legend. So Flutta for me, since he plays so many different heroes and traditionally fills their DPS role and their sort of yeah. projectile side and also been playing Tracer for them. Uh, I think that Flutta is the one that sets the pace, mm-hmm. but they're the ones to beat in APAC. And, and it for is sure. really hard to criticize, you know, I, you know, trying to find like counter arguments as to why the Shanghai Dragons are not the favorites or kind of even knowing what their weaknesses are. Like weaknesses are very easy to spot when a team is losing, but when you're winning, you know, it's kind of like, where are the cracks? You sometimes can't even tell. Yeah. So. And dragons, I don't think they've really ever, like, when you do about the season, like, they've seemed to, like, it's tough to tell if it's just cracks for them or if it's the fact that they've played against really tough teams that have exploited, like, a lack of preparation at times. Yeah, there, were, some... there were a few times with, the, especially the hero pools, like, yeah. when they played somebody, like, very early in the week uh, where kind of they had a plan, but it wasn't working and somebody else just like took them off script. Mm-hmm. That Only in those specific times did they ever really struggle. And even and then, quite I a few like times they adapted. adapted pretty, yeah, yeah, they've adapted yeah. pretty heavily. And now at this point, because also early in the season, the, the meta style was a little bit different at points it was, yeah. than it was in other years of Overwatch. So it took some adapt- like adapting for just everyone, players and coaching-wise, to just get used to sort of the style of play. And some teams got used to it a lot faster. And now Dragons are perfectly acclimated. They're both salt and fresh water. Mm-hmm. And they can do whatever they desire. Yeah, and they're not going to get caught off by a difficult opponent in the first round, right? So Hopefully. with the entire playoffs being a singular meta, that being there are no bans at all, you know, even if they do kind of like pick wrong, I guess, which there's only so many teams to scrim in Apex, so I assume they're going to converge on a singular meta going into the playoffs. You know, the, the likelihood of the Shanghai Dragons being caught off guard or somebody going off script on them, very low compared to what very, this very low, situation yeah. was like during the middle of the season. Last time I'm going to try and ask this, Sag, is current Shanghai Dragons better than last year's playoff shocks? No. God, that's so hard. No, I don't think so. No. Okay, well, definitely not. I, I think that that question I think the is shock so level dominance at GOATS was so insanely huge that it was just, it, it, I don't think it will ever be replicated in terms of just a team being so disgustingly good at a meta. Other than Eagle Gaming, of course. Yeah. Other than Eagle Gaming, that's, yeah. a, that's a given. But I don't think any team will ever be, if a team ever gets to as close as good as a singular meta that shock was at GOATS, it, I mean, I don't even know what it would even look like. Because even now, because of, we've shifted away from that super heavy style, like Dragons have had to reverse sweep a couple times, and mm-hmm. they've looked really, really good because teams just put them on the back foot. They've had some really good individual plays against them and just sort of picked apart some maps that they've been great at. So I do think that Goat's shock it, during the Goat's meta was just so unbelievably dominant that it will never become close ever again. I think they'll by far and away the most dominant team ever on a meta. Well, speaking of the San Francisco Shock, let's go take a look at the uh, four teams NA. sitting on the North American side of the bracket to see what we think about them. Now, Albert is no longer here to hear his thoughts, our thoughts, I should say, <laughs> on his team, so he'll be missing out on that. But the teams in the A that we'll be starting with, we, of course, have to start with uh, the current fourth place, which is Paris Eternal. Mm-hmm. Paris Eternal are a team that sort of exploded onto the scene. Yeah, you know, I'd I, say I think this is probably one of the teams that the fans have felt kind of pleasantly surprised with how things went. You know, people were worried that this team 
wouldn't live up to expectations. Everyone was kind of like tempering the hype. They did get Sparkle and people were like, oh, is Sparkle going to live up to the expectations? I think everybody was ready for Paris to fall apart and yes. disappoint. I was I was extremely ready because I was like, you're going telling me you're going to take a bunch of mediocre French players, what look to be mediocre French players, and combine them into a mixed roster with top tier With Koreans. someone that has also never run mixed rosters before. Yeah. And you're going to make it work. The recipe for failure was there. There were components that other teams have tried in the past and have flamed out pretty massively. So I think that everyone was kind of very cautious about it. And and yeah, but uh, but other than that, especially, you know, as soon as the the fielder swap came in, that was kind of like when I first started taking notice that like, oh, no, this team is like, you know, there's something going on here. There's stability through players. There's some sort of consistent undercurrent to them. And then you start having people like, of course, Sparkle joining, XC already being insane, and then Hanbin, another guy who wasn't really Ooh. on people's radar, but he, I mean, I'll let you talk about Hanbin. I mean, what else what can you say? He's he's pleasing to watch. <laughs> pleasing to the eyes. He's pleasing to watch. I think he has been the focal point of this team almost exclusively. He's proven he can play, not exclusively, that's not fair, but he's proven he can play every tank that is needed. Mm-hmm. Uh which is great because now that we've moved out of sort of a Sigma-centric meta, we know he can still play D.Va, he can play Zarya. Uh, it, the, the guy's just nutty. The guy is just straight nutty. And with the star power attached with Sparkle, but granted now that we're a little bit less projectile-oriented at times with some of the hero swaps and mm-hmm. hero plays because we've been playing a lot of like Ash Tracer, Ash Sombra, Sparkle hasn't always been playing um, those heroes necessarily, but they still have great flexibility on their hit scan role between both Soon and Xe. Yeah, they can put Sparkle in on that. They they have Nico to play. So Nico Sombra has actually been really good when we see Nico play Sombra at points. So I'm actually really impressed uh, with that. So and, and they been been better. Ben Betterman. And he's probably yeah. He's the improved best. so much. It's he is my pick for the most improved player of the season, yeah. and it shows the power of just really good structure. Trying to think if I can think of another more. I would Dante. Dante, you know, Dante had Dante at points even in season one was contesting Sinatra for the tracer spot on shock. Like, yes, I don't think Dante is it comes close to that conversation because he's always been really good. Ben Best looked like one of the worst main tanks in the league last year, and now he's looked really good mm-hmm. on Arissa too. Not even like his his comfort pick. Yeah, I'm just trying to find counter arguments, but no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just, it just shows the power of good structure yeah. and really good, like having a really good environment. And they've been playing with someone on high ping with Fielder, who's like, you know, compared to other flex supports that were people were hyping them up, like Iris, who came in for rain. Iris has really struggled on high ping, mm-hmm. and Fielder has looked great. So yeah, and then I, as much as people talk about Xe, you know, soon again is probably looking at some of the best Overwatch that he's played uh, in a while. So you know, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, overall, they've just revitalized. They've just revitalized this. The French players on the squad. And they built it. They brought in a lot of great Korean talent, and they're just nuts. And I, I think their power level has gone down significantly, though. Not being able to play Genji mm-hmm. makes the, and that's also sort of why I feel they fell a little bit flat uh, in the Countdown Cup. Was not having uh, Genji hurt them. Yeah, I think it hurt I them. I mean, when you have Sparkle, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling. Not nearly as confident in them currently. Uh, I don't think they're going to be a team to dethrone Shock or Fusion or even uh, honestly. I am feel I and we're going to talk about them next, but Mayhem as well. So Paris fans, if you're a Paris fan, you should be saying, okay, we need to see. Honestly, I would like to see less Sparkle and more. Nico and Soon. Yeah, Nico and Soon were playoffs. looking really good. And they've been playing them recently. They played yeah. them. Uh, I mean, I would still like to see Xe get played, but yeah. like those, they just, I don't think Sparkle is the time, it's necessarily time to be playing Sparkle unless mm-hmm. they want to force Doom compositions. That's really it. Yeah. And as much as I think that, uh, you know, I'm going to disagree with you. I think that between the Paris Eternal and the Florida Mayhem, I do think that the Paris Eternal are the better team. In, you think in the they're the better team? Yeah, I think that Florida Mayhem, they were obviously a little bit uh, biased towards them because Albert hangs out in chat. No, I'm not even biased. <laughs> I legit, we'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about yeah, them next and but, we'll discuss it. But even it. like the Florida Mayhem, they obviously had that that really good period of time where they had Yaki Tracer and that yeah. point where they were just like absolutely steamrolling nerds for a while. Um, but I do feel like they've kind of been falling off since then. They really right. haven't been able to kind of get that same magic they did earlier during the actual uh, May Melee. And they've been struggling in these uh, past few games as well. You know, they, Really? I mean, they took a map off of Shock. They had some decent matches. They lost Shock the Valiant and went 3-1 against the Gladiators. Yeah, but I'm I'm not I'm not too worried about regular season. 
<laughs> right, regular season Especially, doesn't matter to you. Well, it's also because the meta is just literally not what's going to be played, right? Yeah. I, I would say that the meta that is going to be played, I guess yeah. it's close-ish to what's being played. That's yeah. fair. But but if I'm if I'm looking at a team that is going to want to like really take it to Paris, and you you would want to at least draw blood against the Philadelphia Fusion True. and the uh, the San Francisco Shock, you can't be having performances like that against the LA teams right now with the spot mm. that they're in. That, that that that's very fair. Well, I guess moving on then from Paris, but overall solid squad. They have they're definitely we shouldn't count them out. They're really really good. They have definitely chances to upset, and maybe if they find sure. the right roster with their DPS lineup, mm -hmm. I think they'll be solid. Um, and also there is one weak spot. Uh, FD God's Mercy isn't like Lucio tier, his Lucio tier. But other than that, his Mercies look still fine. So it's not a huge deal for them at all. But moving on, Mayhem at the number three seed in an A. And Mayhem, they have captured the hearts and minds of the folks, and Albert is in chat, so, you know. Oh, he is? I thought he had to leave. No, he was. Liar. He came back so he, he could he, listen. He just, like, said that so that yeah, he, he didn't would want to know speak honestly he without him being he's around. Like, so, he's like a guy, like, back in the day on on uh, LG, uh, Train and Vol would, whenever they would play a big streamer and they Those beat are them. Those names I haven't heard I know you haven't heard them in a long time. time. But they would do, what they would do is after they beat a big streamer, they'd go and watch the VOD back, and that's Albert with this. It's like, he wants to go <laughs> <laughs> Let's go listen to us talk about Mayhem. But there's a lot of good things to say about Mayhem because are, this, what sure. used to be one of the worst teams in Overwatch League is now in top three at the end of season three. Yep. They are looking really, really good. Their DPS combo, they're the only yes. DPS duo in the league to both have over a thousand final blows. That's cool. I didn't know that. They have those, their two DPS players account for 50% of all their final blows, which no other team currently has. Hmm. Which is pretty nuts. Yeah, pretty nuts. obviously Yaki's uh, been quite a star. Everybody really were, was enjoying his tracer play. But then BQB, you know, I think that he's somebody who was historically underrated. And I think now people are really starting to appreciate how good he I is. I remember BQB at the end of stage four, season two, when there was like the Hanzo halt hook meta. Yeah. BQB was just straight pounding. I was like, I, this guy played, this was a Sombra. It's a long line of Sombra players from Korea that everyone said was really good at Sombra, and I never thought he was that good at Sombra, yeah. but he was so good at everything other than Sombra. Yeah. Like, every time I played Sombra, I was like, get this man off this hero. I don't want to see him play Sombra, but every time I played like Hanzo, or now Ash, yeah. or Kree, he's, he was nuts, and I was like, this is oh such a weird oh, dichotomy. Yeah. We tried, to, uh, well, you know, from doing scouting for potential players to figure out for the Dallas Fuel. Oh, I messed up the seeds. It's actually third and fourth. Mayhem or fourth, Eternal or third. I messed up the seeds. I swapped them around. All right. What it doesn't really matter, yeah. honestly. It doesn't really matter in the context of this, but I did swap up the seeds. I completely lost my train of thought. Anyway, you said that of course BQB, one of the the DPS, very underrated, you know, starting more recently to be appreciated, but another individual who's really kind of shown to be absolutely fantastic is Gargoyle. I, yeah. th I think that he's a player, especially on the Sigma, who has kind of been right up there with players like Krong in terms of how effective they've been. Never forget that a certain chat of the plat. Said that Gargoyle was a hog one trick. Didn't think he was that good. What? I didn't see that episode. Well, I'm probably glad. Oh, I mauled it over that episode quite heavily when they were discussing <laughs> when they were discussing the mayhem pickups. I mauled it over that quite heavily yeah, about I, when they talked about Gargoyle and such. I was like, ooh, no, Mr. Egg. No. <laughs> no. I disagree. I and I have been proven right. I am vindicated. Yeah. No. But he's also been vindicated also. I mean, he was right things. on charge. He, he was, so, yeah. you know, it's a back and forth. Yeah, anytime he's right, he's posted a YouTube video about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you make a thousand guesses, a couple of them got to be right. You just yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of like those people who like tweet all the different possibilities and then just delete all of them and be like, "See, I predicted it." Right. I always love uh, the new meme. Actually, this is unrelated to all this, but the new meme is like the other day, Packington he stole a meme from Unter and he posted that like it's like, "Hello, I'm Sideshow here to make my ten thousand Valorant tweet of the day." <laughs> <laughs> It's like this face smiling because like he's been tweeting so much during the Valorant events. But yep. I mean, I don't blame him. Like he's really into the game. He likes yep. talking about doing analysts. But it's just really funny. Like I love that meme. It's another fresh Mr. Egg meme. But so continuing though with Mayhem. So TLDR BQB, Gargoyle good. Gargoyle good. Gargoyle, Gargoyle good. real good. Yep. Real good. Their DPS lineup is nasty. They're super flexible. They picked up one of the best flex supports from Korean contenders with Gundam Jin. Mm -hmm. uh, and that guy has been sick. I've actually been... Very pleasantly surprised by Chris as well throughout the season. Chris, his Lucio has been solid, and his Bap and Brig have both been pretty good too. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, like I would almost argue his Lucio has been his worst hero. Yeah. Despite being a Lucio player originally. Uh, so I, I think it's pretty impressive. And then Fate, been a return to, used to be what used to be considered a top main tank, sort of fell off a bit. In the early seasons yeah, of Overwatch, he's had an interesting career, but a his controversial one. It's it's returned. It has it's returned, returned to yeah. I would say top form now. Uh, they have they just honestly great. I I love mayhem all around. I know 
So let's get to talk about Paris Eternal Mayhem just real quick okay, discussion okay, okay. here. So what do you feel about Paris Eternal makes them a better team than Mayhem? Because I think Mayhem's a better team than Eternal. There's not like one. What the mo- give me give me the bullet points. Give me the highlights. You know the spark notes. Yeah, I think I think that Florida Mayhem is a team as much as like BKB and Yaki, Gangnam Jin, um, and Gargoyle are all fantastic players. I do think that the like the pop off potential or the individuals who can like really carry and clutch out fights or things like that. I think there are more individuals mm. like that uh, on the Paris Eternal. Really? Yeah. I like think- you think so across? I mean, it's like so. I, I see Hanbin. Yeah, I see Fielder, Fielder, Sparkle, Sparkle. I all, mean, Nico Sunexi can all sort of do their own yeah. stuff. But then, but because when I go to their, and then you know, when I go to their tank line though, I look at Fate. Fate can do just you know, I look at Fate and I look at Gargoyle, and I will agree that I feel like Hanbin is probably, it, at, I would say at the at their very least they're equivalent, and but Hanbin might be a bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like that's pretty equal equivalent across the board when I look at them because the only difference I'd really say is like FD God, FD God is like probably in my eyes a little bit better overall like Lucio and Mercy player. Yeah. But I feel like Chris's BAP and his Brigida have been pretty good throughout the year too, perhaps not better than FD Gods. So I feel like they're oh, they're mostly equivalent across the board. And why? Yeah, I look at it, them. it doesn't come across like they're they are. I wouldn't say that there's like one thing that is clearly separating between mm-hmm. them. Just in my head, from you know, very qualitative, just fuzzy stuff. Fuzzy stuff like I, the I fuel. rate Paris higher. I, I would say if it was a Genji meta, I'd agree. Yeah. If it was exclusively Genji meta stuff, then I'd be like, and, yeah. And I understand that like Sparkle is Genji is Sparkle's best hero, but he's also really, really good at others true, too. True. True. But uh, I don't think they've used him much outside of like Genji and Doom, right? You know what I'm saying? But new meta, and also I guess Fera, a little bit of Fera. That actually played Exe Fair too. I don't know. I mean, the pop up potential for me feels equivalent, but I actually like the odds of the Yaki BQB DPS lineup more. Hmm. That's how I personally, and I also think that the I, the, I will say though, one saving grace for Eternal though is the FD God Mercy. I don't like Chris's Mercy. It's, as much as I, FD it's like FD God is like a blank spot in my head. I don't think really so? have a good grasp. Your gray matter has just evolved. Yeah, it's FD just God. like FD God. It's like. It, you know, in Jane Brain directory, search for information about FD God. It's a blank result. I don't really have much mm. of an opinion on FD God. But chat, what do you think? We're kind of split. We're in a, split. In a, we're, we're split. Str- also struggling to enunciate. Like, I don't need to enunciate a key difference. I'm just so going to tell. Oh, I thought you were mainly just talking about words. In yeah, general. it's just like we're, our arguments are very kind of fluff. We don't really have key points that we can lock down as to why we feel our way. So, are you thinking Paris Eternal, or you think Florida Mayhem? FD God is really good. FD God. We'll chatting. debate on that, but either way, Mayhem fans should be rejoicing because we. While everyone d- thinks about that, while chat, you know, just states upon that a bit, yep. Mayhem fans should be rejoicing. Their season's good. Their brand is good. I think they have a great chance of making it far in playoffs. I still don't necessarily see them beating like shock. Yeah, but I think it's. I think it's possible. I think it's possible that this team can make it out of an A for sure. But moving on, we have Fusion. Yes. Or no, no, actually, technically, we have Shock because yes, I think Fusion's locked in at the first seed. So it's actually Shock. Shock, uh, this team, what can we say about them? I mean, the Church of Crust. Yep. They have overall had an insanely stacked roster. They've made five head extra dimensional time prism moves <laughs> that you wouldn't think possible when they picked up Ansan. Yep. They've assembled a, a huge caliber of DPS lineup, a great, one of the best tank lines, if not arguably the best tank line in A. I would argue myself the best tank line in A. Yeah, I think Smurf Choi is the best tank client in A. I think so too. I think that Smurf right now is the best main tank in the league. Yes, he has been shockingly good. Huh? Shockingly <laughs> good. Shock. shock. But yeah, it's like some of like especially on Winston, he's just been doing things that yes. I like nasty. It's just and it's not just like one or two pop offs are not just just popping off with Primal, but like he just looks unstoppable. It's look it's like he's playing a different hero than every other Winston. And player. anytime that they want to play. Reinhardt as well. They have super in the back pocket. If they ever want to now, I don't know if Ryan's really going to be the meta necessarily, but this Ryan's they have that in the back pocket. They have yep. arguably the best Reinhardt player in the world, mm-hmm. the super. Mm-hmm. And Super has shown that he come in and play competently on some of the other heroes as well, where if they need him to do so, be a little bit flexible. Are you but, talking about Genji? No, not Genji though. <laughs> not Genji. And also it wouldn't matter anyways, because Genji's not meta, but definitely not Genji. Uh but overall the shock tank line I think is the best in an A. Um, if we made some swaps with other teams, you could build a better tank line, you know, like put Smurf with like Hanbin or something. I would argue that maybe that's a better tank line, but currently with its current iteration, yep. you know, and the synergy built between Choi and Smurf, 
And, it's the best. And, you know, thing and of the changes that they've made with like Tayo and things like that, it almost like, you know, they've got such a good roster now, they're just kind of future proofing and going with like what are we doing, you know, to make sure that we're still good for like next season and things like that. There's like what other changes do you really make for this team? Yeah, you know, and also they have the most flexible back line. Yep. Because they have someone that can play Lucio at the top level with Moth. He's flexible enough to play, you know, the other heroes that are necessary, like Brigida, Bap, and Mercy, especially Mercy, like Lucio Mercy both covered. Uh, they have a Zen Bat player, arguably the best potentially on both those roles right now with mm -hmm. Violet and especially Bap, I'd say. And then they have one of the best auto players with Twilight mm -hmm. who's there to play Ana. Like, and like they just have the perfect rotation yeah. that they need. And, and, and all of these guys can be considered, you know, usually I would flame people for being like best team in the league must have, you know, the best players on every single role. But like San Francisco yeah. Shock, I think that like these players are legitimately in contention for the best players in mm -hmm. the role within across the entire and league. And it's crazy because the only part of shock that actually sets them in my eyes as a not, maybe not championship caliber anymore is their DPS lineup now. Can you believe that? Yeah. Which is nasty because their DPS lineup is so good still between Onsan, Striker, Rascal. Their DPS lineup is still so good. But I almost feel that they... At points fall flat. Like they'll have an insane hit scan player with Ansan, with Ansan, but they don't. Rascal's projectile is really good, but there was points where they didn't want to play his mm -hmm. Genji and things like that. And I don't necessarily know if his Genji or heroes like that are on par with people like Sparkles, right? Yeah. Or even now, if we look to like, if we look on the other side of like, uh, they've playing uh, Ivy and EQO for Fusion or Yaki uh, for Mayhem. So and then you look to Striker who can play, you know, if they ever need to play Tracer, Striker is the is though the best tracer, I'd mm -hmm. say. So they're well they're very well rounded. It's just for the meta that we're going into, is this exactly what they want all the time? If they don't want to have a projectile DPS player that can also sub off of other things like other teams can, yeah. because get, you're not typically gonna play Rascal on anything other than projectiles or May. And you're not typically gonna play Striker. I guess somewhat you can play Striker, but Anson is almost exclusively hit scan. So it's just that's the most limited part to me when I look at their roster is their DPS lineup, but it's still, you know, top two, you know, top two, top three DPS lineups in the in the league, and or especially in A. So it is nasty just how good they are across, and they're a real contender for sure. I don't think anyone would be surprised if they make it out of an A. Would you? I wouldn't. No, no. Uh, yeah, I, there's I nothing, think no that, surprises I think there, that right? You know, the very obvious pick for the two teams that are going to depart NA are going to be the Philadelphia Fusion and the San Francisco Shock. They are uh, they are just looking like a favorite, and they're just going to keep working around. I think they build around Smurf. Smurf's their key player, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Right now, in a meta where Winston is going to be the focus for your main tanks more so than anything else, Smurf has looked to be the best Winston in an A. He's going to continue to do so, and they're probably making out of an A go to grand finals. Are they the best team in the league right now? I don't think so, actually. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't so, think so. I don't even think they're the best team in NA. The best team in NA that I think is, of course, the Philadelphia Fusion. Fusion. Okay, so you think Fusion's the best team I in do. NA? Yeah. Currently. Are you, are you going to agree or disagree? You know, now that... So I am kind of split on this, honestly, for right now between the Fusion versus Shock debate. Because I... I don't know. When I've seen Fusion's performances... Recently, they did just 3-0 shock not too long ago. Yeah, in one and, of the and last like they games. lost in the Countdown Cup 4-2 to two against the San Francisco yes. shock, but that was still a close one. That could have been 4-2 in the other direction. Yeah, it, it, it very much could have been. So, you know, I understand that the time where the, the Philadelphia Fusion 3-0'd the shock was, you know, a game that regular season didn't really matter. It's not a playoff, doesn't matter. The uh, Philadelphia Fusion themselves have a knack for being second place, mm -hmm. <laughs> never really being able to really close out a tournament finally win something or like that but uh you know i think that especially losing like that in the canton cup itself could have been like extremely motivating where they got slapped and they, they've got something to prove now um so here's my view on it so fusion i think are i think fusion has some weaker elements like their tank line comparatively to yes. the shock yeah so this is like i would say that kind of the average level of like san francisco shock has some fantastic players yeah. across the board right and fusion has some players that are weaker but you know when i said for the san francisco shock that there's players who you could very easily kind of say are in contention mm -hmm. for the best player in the league at their role sort of thing on the side of the fusion you have not only carpe and alarm but also hisu is who is approaching God, carpe levels of superstardom yeah. yeah. so it's like the very clear number ones in some of the roles do exist on the fusion and i think overall the fusion's 
uh, actual like gameplay and team play. And it's not like, I mean, we're not talking about on a strategic level, but I think that like the aggression and the tempo and almost, it almost feels like the fusion just trust each other more and play together more as a team. Like I do think as good as the San Francisco Shocks strategies are, of course, you know, the church of crusty and all that. I do think that the Philadelphia fusion are just much more aggressive, higher tempo with their strategies. And that's has been given them an edge. I think it will give them an edge going into a much more chaotic and aggressive meta as well. I, I think for shock, they're slow to start generally when metas swap a little bit. And yes. so yeah. the meta did swap a bit when we headed out of Countdown Cup into regular season, into the last games of regular season, the, um, which are probably going to be more closely resembling what we'll be playing now that Genji sort of off the table. The Honestly, for me, the crux, the crux between Fusion or Shock being the best team is Sombra, if you believe it or not. Because I, I, can, Fusion, def- I can definitely believe yeah, that. Yeah, because Fusion, I think, with Hisu, Hisu Sombra is lipped here right now, I think. Uh, Hisu Sombra is like just nutty it's crazy shock they've played sombra they've had success on sombra but i don't feel like they've ever had like just a sombra player that i every time i'm watching them play sombra whether they they played i think so far they've put like striker rascal and ons all on sombra at some point Mm -hmm. um i can't even remember who's exactly playing it more for them towards the end but once they get more to this dive centric meta which they'll probably shift to once we get to postseason because they're kind of slow to start sometimes with crusty uh, once the crusty train gets going, it's got to yeah. build up some steam. Then they feel a lot more comfortable and they look a lot better. And really, it just comes out of Sombra. I think if Shock finds a Sombra player and finds the how they want to play Sombra around that, then or if they find a style that is somehow able to counter Sombra being played, because Sombra is going to be a staple yeah, in person, one hundred percent. There's no way Sombra isn't played a, a, like a ton. So if they find something to deal with Sombra or a player that's going to play it very effectively at the top level, like Hisu and Lip then Shock is the best team in NA. If they don't, I don't think they beat Fusion. Mm-hmm. That's my view on it. Seems reasonable. Yeah, right? Who do you th- there were some arguments in chat about who do you think, like, we obviously agree that the DPS line from the Philadelphia Fusion is better, the tank line is better from the San Francisco Shock, but in terms of the support line between these two teams, who do you think has the edge? And in I terms ask you of this just, question because I don't have every, an In terms either. of every role? Yeah, in terms of like the combination of the back line. Uh, I still prefer Smurf. I, I prefer Smurf and Choi over uh, Sato Fury or Sato yeah, Poco. Of the support line specifically. And support line, uh, just like, are they asking for which particular lineup or just like, because like overall, Alarm Astro has had some of the best synergy of a back line yes. ever yes. in the league right yes. now. Preach. Uh, Preach. And I mean, Alarm is just, not only just really, really good, but Astro has actually been... He has become so much more flexible as the season's gone on. His Brigida, the synergy with his Brigida, with his Mer- like Astro is just, and is obviously if we ever get to a point where we're playing Lucio again, Astro is one of the few Lucios in the league that can just completely turn fights by himself, which is how good his Lucio is. Uh, so I, I kind of holistically prefer the, the fusion backline, but I prefer the shock tank line. And I like, I really like Alarm Astro. I think though, if we're in a meta though, where we can play, go back to playing maybe like a BAP. If, if it's BAP Lucio, if we manage to get BAP Lucio out, I, I favor Shock simply because Violet BAP. But if it's Ana, I mean, and that would also allow Moth to be back in the Yeah, it would, well. but I still, it, yeah, it'd be about Moth to be back too to contest like Astro and Lucio. So that's the only meta where I think the Shock t- support line is like 100% better. Otherwise, if we're doing like Mercy Ana, I kind of prefer the Astro Alarm backline. No joke. It's not that it's not the shock backline is bad. It's not that the shock backline is bad at all. It's rather just like or worse, significantly worse. It's just I sort of prefer that synergy with how Fusion are playing currently. Well, with that, we've gone over all of the North American and the APAC bracket. Well, divisions but now it is time to look at some of the fan submitted oh bro, there are some really oh you peaked first i've seen i'm some looking the at brackets. these for the first time i've seen some of the brackets because one of them came from we got we grabbed one from my discord the rest were from some other submissions that mike pulled <laughs> you think it, si not found did the math so and one, apparently getting a perfect bracket is like one in 7.4 trillion or oh something God. so what what was you guys you got one mike from reddit one from comments of the video no one from one from my Discord. Okay, so we only have two? Oh, yeah, because right, it's right. a pool. Well, let's take a, a look at this one. first one. How bad could this be? Let's do the one from Reddit first. And what's the name of the submitter? Oh, I could probably look this up. 
Lose, lose yourself. yourself to dance. Oh, yeah. He was also wow, my Discord. That was so. like same words and same intonation. Yeah. Word, also my Discord. Yeah. So let's bring up lose yourselves to dance in a bracket first. So overall, is there anything? Ah, Dallas Fuel and Fusion go <laughs> to the grand finals in Korea. So Dallas Fuel beats Fusion in upper <laughs> finals. <laughs> And Justice beat Valiance and Rain <laughs> and, <Boston>. and Eternal. <laughs> why did we pick this? What? Whoa. Yeah, this is why I lost. I actually, I had gla- I had even. I didn't. This is not the one I glanced at. That's the one from my Discord. <laughs> Jane's bracket. Hey, I don't. It's, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm almost insulted. Y'all laughing until it happens. Absolutely. Okay. So, no. <laughs> just, just no. They should just lose a hundred k for this. Just oh. a- actually no. You know, I was I was still like I still had my eyes on the first two columns. I didn't even look over to see who they had winning the grand finals at first. But uh, I don't all, even know. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's see if there's anything that I could agree with. I could agree. There's uh, not. There's no. Not. I could agree with Justice potentially beating Titans. Potentially. Aren't you arguing the exact opposite? No, thing no, no. In the but pre-show? I'm saying I don't think they will. But I could see it happening at least. Yeah. I could see it happening. I can't see Boston beating Houston. I can't see that. I mean, they have Atlanta Rain beating Paris Eternal. I could see Fuel beating Boston. Yeah, I mean, obviously. I could see Rain beating Defiant. Yeah. I could see all that. I mean, the top side of the bracket is not truly heinous. Stop trying to justify it. But this the bottom, the bottom parts are just it's abomination like abomination of a bracket. It's like when you turn over a, a log in the woods and all the bugs crawl out and stuff. It's like I see the top of the log. I'm like, okay, this is a nice piece of wood here. Turn it over. And it's like, oh! like is everything scrambling yeah. out. That's what I see when I see that bracket. Okay, let me see. Okay. Let's look at the APAC bracket. You no, know, they have an APAC one. They do have an APAC oh! bracket. Oh, come on. Who's the they didn't select a winner between Chengdu and Charge? No, no, no. It, there should be a there's a map oh, score. You see it? Yeah, it says oh, three, yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So they have hundreds oh, no, winning. That's the, that's they have hundreds seed. winning. That's their seed. No, no, no. That isn't that how it works. Oh no, that is their seed. Where's the winner for this? It's just going to the. Oh, it's going to grand finals. There's no winner. We're so smart. Oh, we're so All smart. Right. All right. We're so smart. I mean, I I agree with the Jungdo Hunters promotion. I think. No, I don't. I think that the best I don't team agree with the side. I think that this is the. This is Jane Bait. This, this is, is Jane, Jane Bait. Bait. <laughs> if I've ever seen a bracket, this is straight up. Jane I mean, Bait. they had the fuel and the Jungdo Hunters going to the grand finals. Like this is 100 percent Jane Bait. This. I mean, they have. The, I mean, it's really. I mean, not, like if you put this, they have, on, they have dragons losing to hunters. If you printed these brackets out and put them on a human-sized mouse trap, I'd step on it. I would too, because I do to my. If I was in the rat suit only, though, because that's part of the that's part of the RP. <laughs> that's part of the RP is getting caught in the human-sized rat trap. All right. Well, do they uh, have their grand finals bracket too here? Okay. Oh geez. Oh geez. They have hunters four owing the Dallas fuel in the grand finals of the Overwatch League. I'm down. I'm down no. with that. I'm no, down, I'm down no. If this is the bracket, if this bracket come <laughs> come, I I don't even know what I would do if this was the bracket. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what. I don't even. The rat suit's not even big enough to like handle. Give me this. my human sized mouse trap. I would need like we would need to film a music video of like. Is uh, this my bracket? Yes, it's your bracket. Losing yourself and get like. Uh, you should feel ashamed. We of would what need you've backup done. dancer rats to my rat. And we would all be together and do some sort of rap music video or something like I don't know. That's the dumbest bracket I've ever seen. <laughs> all right, I, well, I don't agree. My with this bracket eyes and ears start bleeding. Let um, me take a look at the one from Gallium tell me this next in one my Discord. Same. Right. Let's start with an A again. Gallium. So, oh, lose yourself to dance. I'm going to say your bracket is wrong and you should feel bad. I don't. I don't <laughs> even. I don't like that racket. Okay, so Boston Uprising beating the Houston Outlaws immediately. Wait, mm. why is this one also have the fuel? Why? Going to, how does fuel make it twice? It, how are people keep on putting fuel to make it? Are out you telling of me we only have two joke brackets? <laughs> what is this? How do people keep on doing this? Team Envy Simps. It's not us. We're, we're incredulous. This is not us. We're incredulous. Jane's bracket version two. <laughs> <laughs> these are both Jane brackets in disguise, huh? Yeah, these are my own. So this is what's interesting because they have Valiant. They have Valiant making it out Why too. Why Valiant? I mean, so they have that. Okay, so where does this bracket so really go off the rails? Be, fuel beats Fusion. Okay, hold, bef- like before fuel we even fusion. get to Fuel beating Fusion, right? So Boston Uprising beating Houston Outlaws. Like both of those brackets had that, which is like what? I mean, Houston Outlaws. The chance of them losing to Boston is minuscule. Am I crazy? I, I, I mean, outlaws say, yes, losing to Boston. Other I would That's say you- outlaws losing losing to Boston would be. It is definitely like a less than ten percent chance. 
you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boston it, are so unimaginably bad. I just can't, I can't even yeah. think. And then Washington Justice and Vancouver Titans, we disagree on. You think Vancouver Titans has the edge. I have the Washington Justice having an edge. And then Gladiators beating Boston, sure. Atlanta beating Vancouver, sure. Fuel beating the Defiant, that'll be closer, but I think it will happen uh, if it does. And then we go into Philadelphia losing to Fuel. Like, no. An eternal losing to... I mean, just, honestly, just, I could see just, eternal losing to Valiant, though. You could see eternal losing to Valiant? I could. I no. could. No. If, if no. Valiant have, like, the perfect... the Like, literally, if everything goes no. right... I could see it happening. No. I could. No. Do I think it's likely? I'm not likely? even going to no. justify that with a response. Well, I could see it. No. And then, I don't and, see and how the Fusion lose to Rain. And then the other Fusion yeah. lose to Rain. And, uh, like, not, like, not only just Rain, like, Rain beat the Shock. What is this? What? That's the one that's even... That, there's two... The Fusion... Who, this person hates Fusion. Yeah. Gallium apparently. hates Fusion. This is all I can accept. This is like me, but like stage one of this year. Like early. Yeah. Like I, I also didn't, wasn't huge on the Fusion early on. But I have I mean, like as as much as I dislike Fusion, like I was saying, that, I was saying that they were a pretty good team from very early on this year. Even I think from like well, episode one of this show. But I just that's that's the weirdest part to me. Like the Valiant stuff isn't that crazy for me. Valiant's the least crazy part of that. It's what happens with Fusion, where Fusion gets just like kicked around and mugged in an alleyway. That's like I don't know how Fusion are so bad yep. in this bracket. And then like so Shock loses to the Atlanta Rain. Beats the Paris Eternal, then loses to Florida Mayhem to be eliminated in this bracket. I just, I mean, no. like what? Let's. What, what, I will say though, what what is interesting because Tasmo, the GM for Fuel, was here earlier, and he it, like he was asking who do you think is going to pick Fuel? Yeah. And we, I I I think we you so you think Justice is going to beat Titans? Is I that do, what you I say? do think so. Yeah. You think Justice is going to beat I, Titans I in so. that match? Yes. I think because I think Titans will beat Justice yeah. actually. Yeah. So and what's your reasoning for Justice beating Titans in the early bracket? They've had time to prepare. They're hungry for a victory. They uh, they've brought on Decay. Decay. Yeah. We've seen if he's motivated, which he is. Obviously, he accepted the contract with the Washington Justice. You know, hope they have. They have Janu. They well, have he do Aingar, like money. They have Ark. I mean, they have Decay. I mean, Tuba is still absolutely being fantastic. There's a sixth player on that team whose name is escaping me, but I'm sure he exists. All right, check him out. I, you did Ark, Aim God, Janu, Roar. No, Roar. Okay, let's just, uh, <laughs> never mind. Let's not mention it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I blocked him from my memory. So maybe Vancouver Titans do it. No, I'm kidding. But um, yeah, I, I think that Washington Justice definitely have what it takes to be, especially since I think that Dalton is still too much of a weak spot for the Vancouver mm. Titans. I think Dalton on Tracer, you know, I feel like Dalton's Tracer is pretty good, you know? I'm, I'm, but, like, we've talked about Sombra being, like, true, such a critical true. character. And Dalton Sombra has been... It's been meh. That's generous. That's generous, I know. But, you know, it's... it's yeah. But then they have Shockwave help pick up some of the slack. Yeah, I mean, Shockwave definitely... And their support more, line all has of finally that stopped playing Lucio Moira constantly, yeah. which has made them look a lot better. Mm -hmm. I've actually been pretty decently... I've been feeling okay about the KSA Shredlock tank line. Now, I will say... Because, like, I was worried that Shredlock, once we get to, like, a Winston-style meta, was, like, going to be a lot worse, but he actually looked okay. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know. I feel Justice have the higher ceiling to me. That's how I feel. Justice have the far higher ceiling, but Titans in their current state feel like a better team. That's uh, that's why I'm I won't at. disagree. That's why I'm That at. seems reasonable. Well, we'll have to see. We'll just have we, to see. We, but we let's see the APAC bracket for oh, Galleon. God. Let me see the crack bracket here. Let's see here. Wow, I'm amazed somebody doesn't think Chengdu's going <laughs> to... So Soul Dynasty in New York. How do dragons lose? How are dragons losing all these brackets? What are you guys doing? How do dragons beat Charge and lose in New York? I really feel like we are missing out on whatever our fans are smoking. We should do a contested meetup. That seems like it'd be fun. <laughs> Everybody's just zonked out of their minds. Okay, contested fans, you guys are all going to be on one side of the fence and we're going to be on the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's going to be like. It's going to be like a petting zoo. It's going to be a petting zoo. <laughs> I these this is really the two brackets we have. How do, how does Dynasty beat both dragons and you how explain to me is Gallium in chat? I need Gallium to defend these brackets if possible. <laughs> I need I, I need I need to have some correspondence with Gallium to tell me how Dynasty beats these <laughs> teams. I, that's even that's le that's the more egregious part of the day back. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Strange saw 14 million outcomes and the, this is not <laughs> one of them. I just can't believe it. I can't believe this. So what's the grand finals bracket for them? Oh my god. Fuel in the grand <laughs> finals again? Again for a second bracket in the row? <laughs> what are you A second on, bracket chat? in the row we get fuel in the grand finals? <laughs> 
<laughs> I like it. I like it how both of these people had the audacity to put fuel going to the grand finals twice, but they, but they were still. It's, it was too much of a joke to even suggest that Fuel would actually win it, right? They lost to the They joke. always lose, they always but they keep lose. making it. They Why keep did, that's the crazy the part. Grand it's fun. like Fuel's not going to have to win the Grand Finals versus the Soul <laughs> Dynasty. Yeah, I guess it's Envy versus Lunatic High rematch. It's, that's well, the it's justification. A, it's also the first match of Overwatch League ever, again, because yeah. the first match for Season 1 was Dynasty Fuel. Where we started, we for shall For the end. Grand Finals yeah. of Season 3. Oh, God. There, I, no. We couldn't have found better brackets. I Wow. I mean, you know, maybe these were the best brackets. What would worse brackets that's have looked the truly like? That's the tragic part is that they yeah. could be we could be looking at like the Fermi paradox of brackets. We're like, <laughs> "Oh, these are the best ones that made it past the great filter." <laughs> oh no. This oh could be no, it. no, no. This is John Spector's bracket. Is that what John Spector Worst brackets that? would be your brackets. Oh. Okay. They haven't even seen our brackets yet. Yeah, we haven't made our brackets. Yet. Technically we didn't. We our bra I'm posting my bracket a little bit I'm posting my bracket later tonight actually. Yeah. And you could post yours too if you want. I probably should. Probably should. Yeah. I don't have to though. I'll do it. I do. So you can make fun of me. But I'm gonna be posting. I'll just post seven point four trillion variations on Twitter. <laughs> just put set, just crash the World Wide Web because you put out like literally petabytes <laughs> hey, worth of data of brackets. I get hundred k for it. You literally destroy the Earth's infrastructure, like information infrastructure. Yeah, singularly cause global warming from all of the CO two. That would be impressive. Yeah. If you hit like I'll an right EMP of Overwatch, I'm pretty brackets. sure I could write a simple Python script to do it. I don't think it could. I don't think it would. I don't think. I think it'd be some fail safe somewhere along the line. I think there'd be some problems there. Well, that's excellent brackets. I guess then. Uh, what? What are we? Uh, what, my call to action is get some help. People that made these brackets. <laughs> get some help. <laughs> that's my call to action. Is to of get the some professional help for the variety. Brackets. For the people that made these brackets, I I need you to see somebody and get to see <laughs> talk to someone. About about what is what's going on over there on the other side of the keyboard. You know, I appreciate the uh, the fuel fandom, but uh, I don't think even the fuel co streams would be that fanatical. I I was just I was, I can't believe we saw two brackets in a row where fuel makes it to the grand finals. Of the <laughs> Not just the finals of NA, just grand, the finals grand finals of the, of the Overwatch, Overwatch League. League for two brackets. Oh, oh man. Okay. Well, do we want to? Okay. What, well, we just kind of in about ten minutes proved the necessity of quality control. What should we? What should I even ask? I don't know. Uh, who? Well, what do we you know have what? for you, our mailbag? We Jane, I know you're reading this. Please. We, uh, but see, the problem is, like, even if you link me your bracket, I'm not the tech producer. He's over there. Yeah. And he and would you can't be the one him. who would have to load it into the stream package. I can't do that. So I. Can't. And our tech producer and can't read. Apparently, our tech producer is illiterate. That's how your brackets of his got own in. admission. That's how your brackets that's, got yeah. into there. Illiterate and blind. That's that's why those brackets were picked. Well, I think then should be to make your pick of. I, I would actually, you know, what's interesting to me? Make your pick of the sneaker challenges. Ooh, Who's the first to get the challenge of the sneaker challenges? So if you guys haven't seen that, you should t you should take a look. Overwatch League posted it, but. Tell us just who do you think for of the sneaker challenges that are for with bait that little collab who are going to be the players that get them, you know who's the first to get their environmental kills as a support or who's the first to get like the five earth shatters Astro. you know who's like the one that get the flood of deadlifts in in the matches for during the postseason it could be any of them you don't have to you don't have to choose it can, it doesn't have to be all of them it could be all of them if you want but just tell us the list in you know my Discord and contested mailbag channel and contested mailbag subreddit. In the comment section for the MBTV for the when the video goes up there, in the podcast reviews, which yeah. I always say, who knows if that actually happens, but anywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and then, uh, uh, put your also responses. if you'd like to join Team Envy, uh, make sure you <laughs> make sure you join Twitter video. Make sure and you your, join the Twitter live stream. Make and sure you're send in your there. application through Periscope. That's chat. the actually the only requirement. That's to the join only Envy way that is you, you can must join be Team watching Envy. the show from Twitter from Twitter <laughs> live streaming platform. <laughs> That's it. That's the one thing. Anything? Any closing? Any other closing statements we should add there? Yeah, I mean, if you guys are going to be watching the show, uh, I'll be co-streaming the Dallas Fuels playoff game on Friday. Avast is obviously going to be doing a companion stream of, of all the games, right? Of course, as yeah. is tradition. As is tradition. So is if tradition. you're watching the playoffs, feel free to join either Avast or I as we watch and commentate our five head mm. opinions about the game. Any dark horses? You know, I'm going to add one final comment. Any dark? Here's my dark horse candidate. So... I think Dark Horse candidate uh, is was may does Mayhem count as a Dark Horse? Yeah, I think that. Yeah. Do you think they count as a Dark Horse? Yeah, I'd pick Paris win? as my Dark Horse. I think that there's a sizable gap enough between them, any teams really in NA no, and Philly and uh, San Francisco. If not Mayhem, then Valiant. 
If, not if not eternal, then... Atlanta. Atlanta? Really? You're going with Atlanta? I mean, like, it's... I was going to take it to Gladiators there, but you're going with Atlanta, huh? Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I'm a risk taker. That's a risk taking move. Well, send in those responses. That has been contested. The last of the playoff preview. I am a vast. This is Jane. And we'll see you guys next week.